All right, hey guys. Uh, yeah, taking my lunch. Do a, do a video for you. Um, yeah, it's an exciting time of year. Stripers are around. Um, and given the places that you're gonna go, remember, my main message is like, stay safe. All right, things get slippery, things get wet, especially high, low tides and stuff like that. Be very, very, very careful on rocks. Make sure people know where you are. Um, ideally, ideally, if you've got like, even like a life vest, wear it if you're out on the rocks. Um, it, it's, it might be a little cumbersome, but you know, it's one of those things you end up in the water and having a life vest on. It's got the it's got the word in it, you know, life vest. Um, it could be the difference between somebody finding you and uh, you know and getting you help and, and you not being able to get help to you. Um, remember the idea of like you know you know throw and go versus versus never jump in the water after somebody. So you know throw something floatable in the water or if you got a line or whatever for the other person. They, if somebody ends up in the water um, <coughs> and. Um, and you know, and go means like go for help. You know, you know, you got your phones, you got you got lots of ways. You know, get to nine one one right away. Be specific with your location, um, all that jazz. Note the time. You know, because anybody who is going to do a search and rescue, they're gonna they're gonna want to know time, place, and they're gonna like look at like okay, where was somebody floating? You know. All right. Anyway, let's get to the fun stuff. You're not gonna end up in the water, right? Um, first thing first it's like it's like before even like lures like there's you know i carry i carry three kinds of rods with me all the time in, in the back of my car um this conventional one that's here that's if i'm just going to be fishing straight up straight down straight up straight down so i'm not using that from shore um <laughs> but you know i've got two multi-purpose two multi-purpose rods and i just want you to see there is like a little scale difference the, um one of them is rated for lighter stuff, smaller lures, and the other one is is rated for you know, heavier. I was just throwing these, the heavier, heavier lures. So it's like these may look similar in size, but like this is this is significantly heavier than that than that lure. So hopefully you're throwing lures that match the the size of your rod. You know, so I know a rod investment is going to be a tough thing. So here's what I, I will show: is that you know you're thinking of like putting a leader on. You don't need you don't need a crazy amount of length for a leader. Um, what you're trying to do with a leader is it adds a little bit of shock resistance. You know, when the fish when the fish takes the lure and everything from the braid. Braid has no no give to it. It's, it's it's a direct connection, which is awesome for most of your line. But then once you get to your lure and everything, you, you, you want something that has like a little bit of pull, a little bit of give. Um, <coughs> and, and the pound test on this should be, should be close to the pound test of your braid. The thicknesses are not going to be the same. The braid's going to be much thinner than, than the, um, much thinner than the, the diameter of this. Um, I also do these angler clips at the end. That's optional. You can use a uni knot and direct tie the uni knot to your lure. But as you get into this, you can quickly snap on a lure. You can quickly snap off a lure <laughs> um, with with these anchor clips. So that's always at the end of my. No matter what I'm fishing, that's always at the end. Um, let's go over. So the knot that I'm using is a uni knot. This is one that you want to sit down and practice with. So look these up all day long on on the internet. But if we just take and put it through the eye. Here's what I like to do is I like to take, have a good amount of tag end to work with, and it's a loop. So you're just doing a loop. These two, these two lines are parallel. Take this tag end and loop it like, eh, loop it like that. So that you can then take this and spin it over the double, the double line. I like to go about five times with something that's thick like this, like this one, two, three, four or five times um, with something that's thick like this for this 50 pound mono. Get it wet, give it a pull, pull all the way down until it's cinched and then cut off the tag end. So a uni knot is, is one to like definitely know. You can do a, a clinch knot. The reason I like the uni knot is it's one knot to remember. And it can also be the knot that you use to tie braid to, to um, 
your your leader line. Now that this knot was frayed, so it's worth redoing. <coughs> if I'm doing braid to leader, I'm going to end up doing the uni knot and curling my finger as if it's like an eye of a hook and you're just holding it like that. And again, I'm like pulling this out here, I'll back up. I'm pulling this out so that these two are like parallel. Then I'm going to take the tag end and make a loop. Okay, just a simple little loop. And then I pinch that, hold that there. I like to put my pinky here to kind of hold that loop open. But what I'm really doing is I'm gonna pass that tag end over that double line once. Now, since this is a thinner material, I'm not going four or five times. This is a, this braid material. I tend to go like seven or nine times with this. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, now with this, again, I got the tag end. I'm gonna kind of pull it, get everything wet, and pull, 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 pull and let everything kind of go together. I don't want anything, you see how there's like a, oh, there it is, cinched up. That's what we want. We want everything to cinch up. If there's any little loops or ta uh, things besides that tag end. Now this little loop, now I'm gonna just, if I'm gonna, I'm gonna treat that, I'm gonna push this down, try not to lose that loop. <clears throat> because now that loop I'm gonna treat like I did for this clip. That's gonna be the eye that I tie the other end of my leader through. I got this. Okay, so again, that double line, I'm gonna give it a little pinch and I'm gonna do a loop, a loop. I'm just gonna try and hold everything together. I got this, the double here where the main leader is and the tag end have overlapped and I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. And if I can, five on this, I'm gonna go just four. Um, this will hold, cause it's again, thicker stuff. Now getting these two to match up. I like to cinch down the smaller one and then carefully bring this other one down, 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 down there. Try to cinch this little loop up carefully until right at the end. That's where I'm gonna give a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. Now you've got, this is what's called a uni to uni knot. Okay, and Again, trimming that off, trimming the other tag end off. Now you have a leader. Now, all of this said, you could just do a barrel swivel there. You can get like a really good spro barrel swivel when you're buying these anger clips. And you could do just like, you know, three feet of leader material and have a uni knot to a barrel swivel. And then from the barrel swivel, another uni knot. Um, that can be for, since you're younger anglers and you, you know, newer at tying the knots, that can be a quicker way of kind of cinching all your gear together. Now you want to make sure that as you're reeling that in at night, that the barrel swivel, swivel doesn't go into your guides because it could like pop out <coughs> one of your guides and everything. So you do have to be a little more careful with that. So this is ready, ready to fish. Now again, um, so, so now quick like, so I'm using, if I'm fishing for a striped bass, I'm, I'm not really going lower than 20 pound test, all right, um, for anything. So it's for the braid or the, the leader material. Um, I, I pretty much, I run the lighter rod that has a lot of these lighter lures at, with that 20 pound test. And when I skip up to the heavier rod, I tend to go with that 40 or 50 pound test on everything. So, so I'm matching things up. Now we talked about you know, I don't know what's in your bag. It doesn't, so soft plastics could look like this. They could be paddle tails. They could be, just like look at the general size of, of like these. They're about the same size. They're gonna do about the same thing. Um, so, some of these have weights on them, some of them don't. Um, so yeah, soft plastic can be something that you throw out. You could get something like a soft plastic like this with a jig head if you're at a tackle shop. And you know, you put the, you probably have to buy them separate and put the two together and jig heads are gonna have different ounces. The, the fast currents that you're fishing are almost like the Cape Cod Canal, where, where I know you're gonna to wanna to go. So you might, you know, just when you have a soft plastic, you actually might wanna put a jig head on it that actually has some lead to bring it down a bit. There we go, that's like a little phlegmy eel, little cheap thing that you can get at Walmart. But then from the quality tackle shop, I'm adding on a PKK jig head. Uh, this one's just about a half an ounce, but I go from like half an ounce, ounce, two ounce. Um, 
depending on the, again brings it brings it down so again you might you may not have the same stuff i have but like this type of like little bomber or an assault pro minnow or a crystal minnow so any of these that have like a little lip like this these aren't going to dig down deep but they will dig down under the surface a bit and they just swim they swim like those are going to be solid things as new fishermen to try um like i'm you know the idea if you're fishing fishing and there's some light like daylight low light or in the morning or as it's dusk toss a popper out um splash splash it pop it through could be a pencil popper could be one of these learn how to do those um something that floats this is a this is a jumping minnow but like like um what is it there's like there's the there's like a little super spook spook is a general term for like something that floats on the top of the water and does this like walk the dog motion back and forth you have to impart that motion with your with your rod that's something that you learn to do in the daylight and then you can also like mimic it at night yeah there's a lot of different things that you could be trying um if you've if you've got like a little tin or a diamond jig or something like that you could throw that out and let that kind of wiggle in the current that's going to give you both distance it's going to give you both distance but it'll also give you some movement and it'll give you some depth um you want to you know you know where you're fishing don't you know make sure this doesn't get hung in the rocks um if you're over a muddy bottom you can let it like hit the bottom then bring it up and okay you, you got a ton of options uh, really what else you got Got, got some bucktails. You don't have to do this, but I, again, I don't know what you have. But if you have some sort of bucktail that you can throw out, this is one, you know, bucktails are, are one of those things that that allow you, depending on the size of the head, the weight, they, like the length is, is pretty much universal. Um, but the size of the head is what changes the how high, how low it is. You can put it, you can put a strip of something on the end or you can just fish it as it is. Um, you know, it's one of those things where you could buy a few different weights. Just get white. Just get white. It's totally fine. One color, one simple color. Get get a one ounce for where you're fishing. Get a get a two ounce and just see how those swim. If you feel like you can't end up getting towards the bottom after fishing a few times, then then go ahead and maybe get a three ounce or a four ounce bucktail to see if you can get down to the bottom. So a bucktail is one where a lot of times you're letting you're throwing this out you're letting it drift down with the current letting it hit the bottom and when you feel it hit the bottom that's when you start your retrieve and you're having it kind of like glide back over over the bottom you're you're every now and then you're feeling that tick of the bottom you're going to lose some of these because you're doing that and if you're fishing around rocks then you're going to learn to you know kind of keep that retrieve so that it doesn't get hung up in the rocks but it's just above the tops of the rocks bucktail can be a killer thing to to use so many different types of lures so like when i look in my bag i've got stuff that rides high i got stuff that swims and wiggles for me i've got stuff that just kind of like glides through the water and then i've got i've got stuff that will like that will sink and that, so i'm trying to do a variety of different things and when you're looking at it, a lot of the lengths and everything they're all similar. They're all somewhere in this, like, this range. And don't overthink it. When in doubt, just throw something different and do something different until you find something that works. Um, I do think with the currents that you're fishing, trying to get your lure to end up in a different spot, different height in the water column, is going to be one of the first things that you try to figure out. Okay, when I throw it here, and let it go i know that it's going to end up like kind of going out and i can feel it hit bottom right around here and try and decode different different spots within your spot different heights in the water column within your spot fish go ahead and throw it so it goes right along the rocks and comes back right along the rocks for you if you're at a jetty or something like that because that edge might be where you're looking look at the water and maybe maybe there's this like v shape fish that pizza wedge.
get, you know. So if you see a, a wedge of pizza on the, the, Dave Anderson says this, a wedge of pizza in the water, that's where the water is like ripping through and there's current changes, fish the edges of that pizza. Um, and again, different depths, different speeds. All right, have fun. I mean, you, things are gonna dial in. You're gonna catch something. Um, and, and hopefully your knots, like make sure that your knots are good. You're young, it's okay to kick on your light, away from the water, get your knot right. You got your phone, look up, a, you know, if you're stuck on the water and you forgot, it's okay, look up a tutorial. You got your phone and you're within cell service, tie good knots, because you're gonna, you're gonna hate it if the knot was the reason why you lost something. And if your line gets frayed, if you feel it, replace it. Or put, you know, replace that section line, cut it off, start new. It's definitely better to take like a, a 10 minute break <laughs> to get everything right than to, than to fish and like feel it on and then lose it. Um, yeah, you're gonna catch something. It's gonna happen. We're in, we're in spring and there's a lot of stuff around. Good luck.